Welcome back to Life and Style. A very, very good morning to you. I hope you're doing great. Remember, it's still Artistic Tuesday, and I'm loving the conversation on Twitter already, so keep it going. It's uh, KTN Life and Style. The hashtag is KTN Life and Style. Now, we are on visual art, and today we're not doing photography or anything. We've got a guy. I hope I'm not going to swallow my tongue when I'm trying to say this. So we've got a digital painter and illustrator. Ah, yes! I did it. So we've got Louis Alosa. See, there's so many L's in there. I was struggling. Welcome <laughs> to the show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so maybe you can start with a bit of explanation on yeah. what really is digital the, painting and yeah. illustration, stroke illustrations. Okay. Digital illustration, stroke painting, it's a, a type of art where you use a digital medium, such as laptops or other electronic mediums, also smartphone or tablet. Okay. So as for me, I work with the laptop and I work on tablet, which you install on your laptop and um, using a USB cable and uh, a software. Mm -hmm. And also I, I use uh, Photoshop software to paint with. Or there are other options out there, but I prefer Photoshop. Okay. Yeah, because I'm comfortable with that. So what application is this that you, is it software that you? Yeah, it's, it's Photoshop. Photoshop, it's Photoshop. That's, okay. Yeah. That's what you yeah. use. Yeah. Okay. Which has um, digital brushes, mm -hmm. which you can use to paint with, which they, they emulate the traditional brush. Ah. Yeah, you can change the thickness, the size. You can also change it to a pencil, a pen, any medium of painting or drawing you want to use. Absolutely. Yeah, you can use it on Photoshop. Okay, uh, but when I look at your work, yeah. it's not a normal, but like you wouldn't see me like the way I look. Yeah, you yeah. go ahead and do some things to these people. What, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah. um, what people, okay. What do you call that? It's caricature. Yes. Okay, many people know what caricature is when they see one. Yes. But they can't tell it, uh, they can't define it. Mm -hmm. Okay, a caricature, most people think it's, it's uh, a way of making fun of people. Some, yeah. It's not? Okay, I was okay <laughs> that's not the main aim of a caricature. Okay. Actually. The, a caricature, it's, the main aim of caricature is bringing out the, the deeper character of a person. Yeah, it's not just physical. It actually brings out a character of someone. Maybe someone has a funny face, uh, maybe a sad face. Yeah, okay. maybe you can't see it normally, but when you put it in caricature, that's mm -hmm. when you notice, ah, come this guy is normally has that sad face or, yeah. or a round face. A big eye. Or a big eye, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... Okay, how long have you been doing this and why the interest to do this kind of art? Um, actually, the funny bit is that I never had a dream of being a caricature artist. Never? Never. When so how I did was, you get into when it? I was, when I was a kid, my dream was to be a computer engineer. Mm -hmm. So I went and studied IT. I have a degree in IT from Jaquat. So okay. I graduated in 2013. And when, I, when, when it was in 2012, I went to a, an art exhibition at Village Market. That's when I got inspired and, and decided to be serious with art. Okay. So I went on YouTube, started looking at tutorials on how to do digital art, because I Actually, that's what came out of my mind. It's not something that I saw somewhere. I just went on YouTube and saw, wow, people are doing digital painting. I started digital painting before I started caricature, actually. Okay. So one day I, t I tried to, to do a funny, a funny portrait of, of someone, accidentally, actually, mm -hmm. and it came out nicely. So I did another one and another one, and they came out perfectly. It's interesting how it, yeah. it's funny, but it, look, it came out nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it, it's not a planned thing uh, that okay. I, I just sat down and said, wow, I want to focus on caricatures. Yeah. It's just something that came accidentally and I and went you along with it. You know, th there's the funny bit that yeah. cannot be missed yeah. in caricature. There's, yeah. there's, there's that. But do you get consent from people to do it? Because <laughs> I've seen you've done Judy, you've done um, mm. Eric Mondi. I've seen, yeah, I've yeah. seen uh, Sunny, I've seen Saudi. So, yeah. oh my God, that was really funny. <laughs> Actually, yeah. the latest one that people really love is for Professor Jem, uh, Professor Hamo. That was yeah, really funny. Matiang, you, you went ahead and did a Matiang <laughs> one, you know. That was yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, uh, there's a challenge um, 
I'm participating in, mm -hmm. a friend of mine started it. Okay. It's called Karekecha Resolution Kenya. Mm -hmm. So what is basically the, the reason for the, ch for the challenge is that to, to see if we can come up with different views of well, celebrities in mm. our caricatures. He, he also does caricatures. Okay. So he does on his own and I, I do it on my own. Mm -hmm. So he came up with a list of celebrities we work on. Okay. So we do it every day in January, the whole of this January. So wow. Every day we do a, an, an artist, <coughs> uh, a celebrity. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't Actually, if you follow Caricature Resolution yeah. Kenya, K-E, uh -huh. you, you will see our, our caricatures there. there. Okay. Yeah. You know, this is very interesting that you're saying that because, you know, Louis actually went ahead and did mine and you just need <laughs> It is unbelievable. I don't think that's me at all. But you just take a look at this. <laughs> Honestly, so do you get consent? Because I did not give you consent. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, actually, um... I don't get consent most of the time. Yeah. Um, but when they see it, they love but it. But when they see it, they love it. Yeah. yeah. They they don't get offended with mm -hmm. it. That's another funny bit about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I also try not to. That's why I'm telling you the main of character is not to make someone look bad or funny. Yeah. So sometimes I try to not make somebody look ugly or. or yeah. Or, yeah. Don't look yeah. Very ugly. I just look <laughs> odd, but in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. The main aim is just to bring the the inner character of you ah, that's of really you good. yeah that's and true. you still look good in the okay. end yeah the money beats let's talk about the money bits. yeah, so when, <laughs> yeah it, has, the, it has to count for something yeah yeah you know? yeah, the, yeah it has to count for something so how how is that it's it's tr it has been tricky it has been tricky mm -hmm. actually i've started doing commercially on a serious beat from last year okay yeah. how has it been yes well, I, I, it has been good because mm -hmm. actually uh, i quit my job I had a job, so I had to, to quit and concentrate on, on, on the art I'm doing. And I'm not only doing caricatures, I also do uh, digital illustrations like landscape. Yeah, I, I have a bit of illustrations I can, I, I have copies I can send you. Yeah, and they're, good. they're really good, yeah, they're yeah. really good because of, yeah. I've seen, yeah. your work is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, is I everywhere. do, it's I really, do really music good. cover art. Yeah. Because I was going to ask artists. how you use caricature yeah, and yeah. Uh, the digital so, paintings. Yeah, so actually most of the ideas I've got from, the, from my clients, not me. So a client comes to me and tells me, wow, I love your work and I love, I love, it to, I love, I love to have one of your works mm. in one of my business cards or music <sighs> covers or book covers. Actually, mm -hmm. there's an artist from, from America who is... Uh, not an artist actually, he's an um, inspiration speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he approached me and he, he wants a, an artwork for his book cover. Wow. Yeah, so people come with different ideas and I'm currently working with a, a model mm -hmm. who wants um, fashion caricatures. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, I would different, love to different see that. Different dresses, yeah. 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 That's really, really nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how can people get in touch with you and probably your final words because our time is up? Mm, they can get me through Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a page called Alosa Arts. Okay. Um, That's A L O S A. S A Arts. Okay. And then on Instagram, Mr. Luis Alosa, and Twitter, Mr. Luis Alosa. Okay. Yeah. You have a number? Are you comfortable? Um, yeah, my number zero seven two one seventy eight seventy three nine zero. Absolutely, I think you do amazing work, and <laughs> it's a you. very, it's a very unique kind of art. Yeah, and I can, okay, I can also give you my email, no which uh, some people prefer, yeah. uh, alosa.luis at gmail dot com. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. Okay. Like I was saying it's very, very interesting and very unique kind of art, and the demand must be really, really ah, high. It's good. It's yeah. Good. It's really good. Actually, uh, sometimes I also I try to avoid posting a lot of works because <laughs> if I post one. I get like 10 or 20 orders, wow. which I can't control. So sometimes I try to control what we post. Okay. So, so that I, I control also the orders I get. Okay. Yeah. So how long does it take you? How long does it take you to make yeah. mine? It takes around three to four hours. Okay. Yeah. Three to four hours. Com uh, it depends with complexity of the caricature. Okay. How yeah. you want it to be? Yeah. How you want it to be mm -hmm. actually. How the, big? Yeah. How big. 
colors. Yeah, there's some okay. who want diff uh, a lot of colors in their caricatures. Okay. Yeah, and wow. a lot of details. This is very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You saw me. Yeah. So you, you know how to get in touch with Louis. A lot. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on the uh, show. You're welcome. You're welcome. All and right. I'm grateful. Okay. Well, nice has been, uh, well, we're still on visual arts and we're moving on to creative of the week. And here's a feature that we prepared for you. I'm Benta Ngui. I'm the CEO and founder of BW Leather. We deal with leather accessories and also African material accessories. Uh, I started last year, August. I was looking for an extra thing to do and I knew I loved fashion since I was young. So I decided to, to make a bag. I trained myself through the internet, YouTube, I did a lot of research. So I made a prototype and then displayed it on my Facebook account and the feedback was just amazing. So one, uh, one client actually told me to make an exact bag for him and that's when I knew this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Where I source my material is uh, we have leather industries in Kenya from Alfarama here at, uh, at the river. There's another one, uh, leather, uh, a leather company in uh, Thika. So that's where I mainly source my leather materials from. And when it comes to African materials, I just shop around town yeah, for the best ones. We deal with bags, leather bags, and also African material bags. Uh, we make chokers like this one. You can see it's very beautiful. Bangles. We make hats. Um, we make, actually, we deal with any type of accessories. We just deal with accessories, yeah. First, you have to come with, with, a, with an imagination of what you want to create. Okay, and you have to be very creative. And then, because I don't know how to sketch fully, so I just sketch the imagination that I have. And then I make um, a pattern. You have to make a pattern. And then after you make a pattern, you make a prototype. You don't go ahead and use the leather. is very expensive to, to waste. So you make a prototype using resins. And um, after you make a prototype, you'll know where you went wrong, and then you'll correct it. And then now you will make the, the, the whatever the bag using now the leather material or the African material. Rexins are like um, anything that is not made from leather. They are these materials that look like leather but they are not leather. Yeah, most bags actually, the Chinku bags mostly are made from rexin material. So those are, those are not I don't know what, how they make the material, but this, this ones are not like that. Uh, in a day, it all depends if I'm hand stitching or I'm using a sewing machine. When it comes to hand stitching, I can take three to four days to make a bag. But when it comes to using a sewing machine, I take two days to make a bag. Uh, right now, because I'm still using the internet, I don't have a, a specific place you can get me. Uh, when I go to exhibitions, I might end up selling five bags. And uh, so far, I've gone to two exhibitions, and the outcome was just amazing. The minimum I sold was three bags. Yeah, I'm making the bags, every accessory by myself because I still don't have the capital to keep on hiring employees and stuff, so I make everything by myself. This one is a metallic bag. Yeah, it's fully hand-stitched from the inner lining. It's fully hand-stitched. Uh, we mostly use corduroy lining. Yeah, because it's soft and, you know, 
Uh, the other one uh, is a, it's, a, it's called a hair room bag. It has some cowrie shells as you can see, and uh, the zips that we use are antique. Uh, also, the, the, the lining is called dry. Then the next bag has a horn. Yeah, it's a horn from a bull. Yeah, so I have an artisan that makes that. And uh, even you can see the Kalogo is also a horn. Also, the, the lining is called dry. And then when it comes to hats, we mostly make um, African material hats. We have this, this one is a felt hat plus African material still. Yeah. Uh, the hats, uh, we measure your, your circumference, the head circumference. After you get your head circumference, we go ahead and uh, make a prototype and then we make a hat out of it. So it all depends. We have different sizes. Everybody has a different circumference and we, we use mostly felt and also African material. And also the lining is also African material. First, putting your imagination into life give it life you know that is the most difficult part and you have to be very creative because this is a very competitive industry so you have to think outside the box don't do cliche you have to be different so that's the most difficult part you have to be different don't copy don't do what other designers are doing so you your mind is always exercising always coming up with a new design and put, giving it life and putting all the necessities in that bag so that when you sell it, the client will love it. Ah, my inspiration, I love colors. I, even when you, you see my, my bags are full of colors, I love um, uniqueness. And also the African, the, the, I, actually I think I'm mostly inspired by the, the African, you know, heritage and everything. That's why I mostly use African materials. I use horns and I use, I use also leather, yeah. I sell my items through my Facebook page. That is BW Leather. You can also find me on Instagram, BW underscore leather. Yes, those are my two active pages. And also exhibitions, I've gone to exhibitions, far, far, Nairobi Fashion Market. There are so many exhibitions that I go to. If you wanted to make leather bags, or if you want to make leather bags, you first have to have a sewing machine and not just any other machine. You need a walking foot machine and you need two machines. First is a flatbed and also an arm machine. But they are very expensive. For, so for someone like me, I had to teach myself to to hand stitch first it's called saddle stitching so i even as you can see most of my bags are hand stitched so i got the capital i sold some few i got the capital and i bought uh now the walking foot machine you can even get them at a uh, second hand which is a bit cheaper so mostly you need don't just buy any other machine just buy the walking foot machine because it's strong and leather is very strong when you are working with leather you have to be very keen very careful leather is like you know it's it's like it's like a baby once you tear it you can well what actually once you punch holes on it there's no turning back once you you saw it and you saw it in a zigzag way you have to throw it away because you know it's leather and someone who is buying leather it's a very expensive bag so you they don't want to see such such mistakes and you know they're buying leather and it's very expensive and someone is removing his money to buy such a bag and then you just mix a bag with your any poor stitches and everything and also when you're dealing with leather think about the lining most people just make leather yes the outside part is leather but when it comes to lining it's nylon or poor lining everything has to be very expensive from the zips from the fittings 
from everything that you're dealing with has to be very expensive as you can see we we deal with brass mostly and antique zips and also the the, the type of the type of lining we use is a bit also expensive yeah How do I tell the difference between leather and uh, the non-leather materials? Uh, some smell, yeah, as others cut it to see if it's pure leather or not. But most people smell, I, I think leather has a different smell from the rest. Uh, I used to be an actress, yes, I used to be an actress. That's why I got the capital actually to start all this because dealing with leather is capital intensive. You need a lot of money from the machines to the workshop to the employees, everything. So I got the capital from acting. I used to do a lot of TV shows, uh, programs. Yeah, so my family supports me a lot. Yes, they actually, they didn't know I, I can do all this. It was <laughs> at a me myself i didn't know i can do all this but you know i think sometimes situations just or god pushes you to the wall so that your mind just opens up yeah as a designer i think you don't settle your mind never settles you're always creating something you're always coming up with a different with a different design Sometimes I don't even sleep. I wake up around 3 a.m. and start creating images in my head. And the next day I will just wake up and sketch whatever or write it down, whatever I, I saw <laughs> in, my, in my head and then give it life. From when I started going to exhibitions, I can say I've sold around nine bags. Yeah, because we've, we've just started making hats this year so last year I was just dealing with bags and chokers but they also sold around three chokers yeah a full leather bag it all depends with the you know we have different qualities of leather there's the medium quality the poor quality and the very expensive quality so for 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 BW leather bags the cheapest can go for around even 3,800, we are that competitive. The most expensive we have is around 10,500, yeah. And it has a horn, it has antique brass, you know, all that. The hats we started making this year, they go for 800, all of them. Depending on the size of the head or anything, it's just 800 shillings. The chokers, 350. The bangles, 350. So hard for the photo shop. Also, Natena. I'm here to stay. So, I'm here to stay. So, I'm here to stay. God, your father. So, it means you're going to full support. Christine, Slipey, Omzlo, Montana. Uh-uh-uh.